In this video, we'll demonstrate the features of the Web HMI dashboard and how to set it up so you can immediately start visualizing your real-time and historical data. The Web HMI dashboard is an application that can be accessed by any web browser, including on desktop and mobile devices. The app is also flexible in that it does not require a web server to run. It's built right into the OAS service itself. Some of the features of the Web HMI dashboard are It's secure, using a login screen tied to credentials configured in the OES server, and it can run under SSL for over-the-wire encryption. It's modular, containing several pre-built modules for displaying read-write numerical and Boolean data, as well as alarms and trends. It's configurable, and each user login retains user-specific preferences and module layouts between sessions. It's customizable, so you can change the appearance to match your preferred company branding and color scheme. And it's lightweight, not requiring any web server to host it. But if you choose to host it, it's made up of static files not requiring any specific application platform, so it can be served from any server such as IIS, Apache, Nginx, or anything that can serve up files from an HTTP call. So let's jump right into a demo. Once the app is configured, which we'll do a little bit later, you can go to localhost colon 58725 slash app slash home, and you'll be presented with a login screen. And you'll be able to enter in a username and password or leave it blank and then just click on sign in and then you'll be presented with the dashboards. First dashboard is a demo which has a few different modules on it. Then there are the alarms and trends. The alarm houses the alarm viewer and the trends dashboard houses the trend viewer. Now all of the dashboards can be rearranged. You can move them to the position you like in the sidebar by clicking on the down and up arrows so that you can customize the view as you see fit. And you can add a dashboard by clicking on Add and then entering in a name. We'll create one called Test. And then when we go to select Test, there's nothing in there. So we'll add a module. What I'm going to do here is add a few different modules. They're going to all be the numeric module with a single numeric tag. And all of these will show the real-time data flowing through. And then once they're all on screen, I'll demonstrate how you can rearrange them and resize them so that you can customize your view for each one of the dashboards. And then that view, as you've customized it, will be saved to your login account so that your preferences are saved for your next session. The application is also responsive, which means that it adjusts itself according to the user interface. So if you open it up in a mobile browser, it adjusts the size accordingly and it shrinks the header and puts the menu of dashboards in the sidebar that slides in and out. And when you log out, you go right back to the login screen. Next, we'll take a look at some of the built-in modules as well as some of their configuration options. The first of which is the numeric tag module, which displays real-time numeric data as a radial gauge. So we'll select a numeric tag module, put it on our dashboard, and the first of the options is selecting which tag you want this to represent. So you can select the tag browser by clicking on the icon and we'll select the random value and this will immediately start displaying that value in real time. Aside from clicking on the icon and browsing you can enter in the tag value yourself so you can just type in for example sign.value and we'll give it a label as well as the minimum and maximum ranges for that item. Now the sign value in this case is a floating point, so by putting a negative one to one range, we're not seeing any of the decimals. So we can add four decimal places so that we can see more resolution on the numeric value. So let's add another numeric tag module, and in this case we're going to make it a read-write module. So we're going to first go to the configuration tool, and we'll add a tag. In this case we'll call this test number. And we'll just leave all of the defaults so that it's going to be a double float. Now we can go to the module and select that right from our browser, which should show right up. We'll be sure to check the read-write option in the settings. Hit save, and now this is a read-write module, and you'll see there's an entry point to set the value on the front end. And this is actually saving that value in the server, so you can see the value has been changed. And we can change the value on the server, and when we do so, you'll see the value update right in the module on screen. Next is the Boolean tag module, which displays real-time Boolean data. And we have a few other options for that as well. 
So we'll select the Boolean tag module and we'll put in a tag name using the browser again. In this case, we'll choose pump. And you'll notice that when you open up the browser, you'll only see Boolean values. Similarly with the numeric module, you'll only see numeric values. So we'll save this and then you'll see immediately the value is displayed with an icon indicating that it is true. So we can put a label on this. Right now we'll just put pump.value, same as the, the tag name, and you'll see where that displays. And then we can choose options. Instead of showing true and false, we can show pump is off and pump is on, which is a little bit nicer. And then we'll make this read-write and hit save. So the first thing you'll see is the text is larger, so we open this up. And text will scale when you scale the module. And then the icon changes to a switch, which is now enabled for us to click on and that changes the value on the server. So if you'd like to visualize multiple tags within a tabular format, you use the tag data module. Put it on our dashboard. And in the settings, you can apply a label and select multiple tags. Now this will show all of the tags on the server, so I'll just grab a few here, including some double floats and even string values. Now these will all display in the settings and also select read write and it will give you a control which we'll see. So it will immediately see on the left hand side all of the tags with their actual names. On the right hand side you'll see the real time data coming through and there's a control next to each that lets you enter in a value. So you can enter in a value directly to set that on the server. And we can demonstrate what will happen if you enter in some bad data or if bad data is occurring on the server. What you'll see is that the tag will be highlighted and bad data will show up. So we'll set this back and the bad data signal goes away. The alarm module is an alarm viewer based on the web alarm product. It displays real-time and historical alarms with simple configuration and no coding. So let's throw one of these on our dashboard as well. And you see it immediately starts displaying all alarms available with all of the columns being displayed. You can double click to acknowledge alarms. You can filter alarms by entering text and you can also sort the alarms as well. So in the settings, you can choose to put a label and we'll call this one filtered because we're going to start filtering. You can display the search or the history or both. You can choose which alarm types to display and let's remove some of these so that we can limit the types of alarms we're going to be showing up here. You can choose to filter by group, by network node, and you can even choose which columns will display. So we'll remove some of these columns here and simplify the view. And you can also choose the status that you want to filter by. So now we see a simplified view with fewer columns and fewer alarm types. Plotting real-time and historical trends is done using the Trends module. So we'll place the Trend module on the dashboard and we'll see just how easy it is to get started. First thing you'll see is that our no tags are configured, so we'll make this a little bit larger to give us some more room. We'll add some settings and the first thing we'll do is put a label on this. You set up the sample rate, time frame, and retain values and then you start adding points. So the points are all going to be plotted as separate pens, as separate tags. So you'll select the tag using the tag browser or you can enter one in manually. You'll choose a label and you can choose the style that's going to be drawn, fill and points. You choose a data range and then you can start adding more. So now that we've got the signed value, we're going to add in the random value We'll change the color on this one as well as the label. And we'll put a fill on this. Data range for the random value is different from the signed value, so we're going to enter in that data range for the y axis. And then we'll position that on the right instead of the left. And then the last point, we'll use the ramp tag. Set the color to green. Set the label. We're going to show the points on this one. And it's going to use the same data range, 0 to 100. 
and we'll also use the same y-axis on the right-hand side. And immediately you see the data showing up. For historical data, simply check off history data, and what you'll see are controls for entering the start and end date for your historical data. You enter those values, hit get data, and that'll send a query into the database. Assuming that you're data logging, you'll get the historical data showing up in your chart. If you'd like to embed some custom content into your dashboard, you can use the custom module for displaying the contents of a URL. So placing this on the dashboard is similar to others. And in the settings, you just simply select a URL. This can be entered in as a relative URL for the same web server, or you can put an absolute URL, for example, opcweb.com for embedding the full demo site. You can see that it's fully active and can even be resized as if it were an embedded browser. This is very useful if you want to put in some online documentation or create your own HMI within a module itself and just host it on a web server or host it within the HTML files of the dashboard. The final built-in module is the demo module, which shows a comprehensive demo that you've probably seen before in our pumps and tanks example. This module is simply for demo purposes, but it's a great way to test to see if your server is working and all of the built-in tags are serving up data. So now we'll cover how to get started with the application and setting it up. You can find all of this information at openautomationsoftware.com slash knowledge base, getting started web HMI dash, and it's the web HMI dashboard getting started section of the help. So the first step is to open up the service control application and under the web HMI and REST API registration section, you're going to select the port number that you want to run this on. If you want to use SSL, you can check off use SSL and you'll have to have a certificate installed on the server to support SSL. So click register and it'll stop the services. And once it's complete, it'll start the services back up again and you'll be all set. So now you can open up your browser to localhost colon 58725 or whatever port number you've selected and slash app slash home and it'll bring up the default dashboards with all of the demos installed. Now like here, if you've noticed that no data is flowing through, that means that your runtime may not have been started. So what you do next is open up the OAS configuration application, select configure tags, Select localhost and just start runtime. Now you can go back to your browser, go to localhost 58725 slash app slash home, and now you should see the data flowing through. Now, even though the application is served up from the OAS service, it is still running out of static files. So I want to show you the location of these static files in case you want to alter them, if you want to customize the application, or if you want to put your own files in here. So you go to the installation directory of the OES service, which is going to be different on your machine, but there will always be a www folder under the installation directory. And you'll find all of the files, including static files, JavaScript files, and the one index.html file. So you can see that this is being served up like a regular web server by adding a new HTML file here. So I put it in a folder called test. We'll create an HTML file here just in a text editor and we'll just put in the title of test and we'll put a body that just says hello world. We'll save this file in the test folder and then we'll open this up in the browser and you'll see that it's being served up by the application. So one of the first tasks that you might want to perform after installing the application is to remove a module, specifically the demo module. So we'll log in and we'll see that the demo module is installed on a dashboard here. 
and if you were to add a module to the dashboard, what you'll get is a list of the modules that are installed. So you'll see that the demo module is right there in the list. So we'll want to remove that so it doesn't show up on any dashboards that have already placed it. So the first thing we do is go into our installation directory. And in the installation directory, we're going to locate a modules folder. And we're going to make a backup folder so that we don't have to delete anything. And we're going to take the demo module folder and we're going to just put it in the backup. And then we open up and edit the index.html file in the root of the installation folder. In that file, you'll see a list of modules. There's a comment there. And you'll locate the demo module section. And there are two lines, one for the link of the style sheet and one for the script. And we'll just remove those from the file, save it. Now that it's gone, we can open up the browser or refresh the browser. And you'll see that any dashboard that had that demo module installed in it no longer shows it and it no longer is listed in the add module dialog. So one of the final steps is deployment. In this example, I'm going to deploy to IIS, but the steps are similar to any other deployment since it's simply copying the files within the www directory. So you could just copy this folder, www, or the contents. So we'll go into here. You could copy the contents into any of your web application servers. But for IIS, all I'm going to do is create a virtual directory and just point to the source itself. So I'm opening up IIS here, and in the configuration of the IIS manager, open up the default website and create a virtual directory. I'll just give this an alias of HMI dash and then point this to the physical path of the www folder within the OAS installation directory. So you see here you can now access those folders within IIS and in your browser you can just point to your application slash HMI dash which is the alias and it'll open up the application as if it were just part of the IIS install. Now you'll see that the login has failed that's because we have to do one more thing. We have to change the path where the application is communicating with the OES service for data. Now that's in the app config.js within the JS folder. We'll open that up. And in this file, there's going to be one setting. It's going to be at the very top here. It is the OES URL. Now explicitly point this to the location of the OES server. In this case, on my machine, it's going to be localhost colon 58725. Now, this is the same as if you were doing just web HMI development. Or if you had this on a domain, you could do something like myserver.com colon 58725. But I'll just put this back to the local host, save it, refresh, and now when I log in, everything works correctly. So as you've seen, the WebHMI dashboard is a great way to get started visualizing your data without having to write any code at all. If you'd like more information about our products, go to openautomationsoftware.com and click on the orange help, which will get you to the knowledge base section of our website, which is filled with tutorials, getting started videos, and all of the product documentation. And if you're an experienced web application developer, you can also use our WebHMI products such as WebHMI, WebAlarm and WebTrend to develop a custom user interface for your application.